So, you are here for the launch of PSP. And what does PSP stand for? Progress Singapore Party. Yes, that's absolutely right. And who's the founder of PSP? Oh, this time power, right? There's not a big pecha 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 that sound, but now all are the same. Right? Let me try over the Oh, yeah, it still could be a little bit not as long as the people on my left, right? Huh? And without further ado, yeah. this banquet hall so we couldn't put chairs for everyone we apologize for that for those of you who need to stand let me introduce all the important people that are on stage right now they will be speaking to you in a short while but let me start with the first person on my left in case you can't see his name because those who are standing at the back please welcome CEC member Abdul Rahman And next to him, we have Assistant Treasurer of the PSB, Hazel Kwok! And next to Hazel, we have the Chairman, Mr. Wang Sui Chuan! And then I'll hop over to the extreme right here, we have CEC member, Michelle Lee! Next we have the treasurer of the PSP, Mr. Ed Nalakarupa! Next to Nalakarupa, we have the Assistant Secretary General, Lee Yong Hui And ladies and gentlemen, I saved the best for last. This man needs no introduction. He is the one and the only Dr. Tan Thank you very much for your wonderful support. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we want to share with you right now what is our motto and our vision for Singapore. So can you all please repeat with me? Our motto will be for country, for people. That is our motto. And our vision will be a united together with me, like I'm doing together with me, a united Singapore. Progressing with compassion. That's why right. giving us a nice round of applause, please. That's our mission and our vision. Okay. And in case there's any last minute people who just joined us this morning, we will want to show you interactive polling. Please go to this website. It's called polleb.com and the username is PSP282 because you will use this platform later to answer some questions and also post some questions to Dr. Tan and the rest of the CEC that you see on stage right now. Okay, folks. Now it's time for me, uh, without further ado, because time is short, to bring on our first speaker for this morning. We have done a very unique thing, you know. It's called a logo mission. So you are seeing it for the first time. Uh, it's quite cool. So everyone take a look at the video screen and it's called our PSP logo mission. on and on, it represents the five values of PSP. So I will not tell you all the five values yet. 
pay attention because that's one of the questions we'll be testing you later in the whole EV. So whether you know the answer or you don't know the answer. Okay, now we're going to bring on the first person that's going to start today's uh, speech. And can we please bring on the slide for Mr. Wang Sui Chuang. Okay, he... In case, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background about Mr. Wang. He's a professional engineer by training. He's worked in Stanford to the government. He has worked with SME in manufacturing. He's a PDM for community service for Ayu Raja, cost agency, campaign manager for Tang Chin Mok for the presidential election 2011. Yeah, he's giving a warm applause, please, for the chairman of PSB, Wang Sui Chuang! Good morning, uh, fellow Singaporeans. My name is Wong Si Chong and I'm the chairman of the Progress Singapore Party or PSP. It's really heartening to see so many of you here this morning. And welcome and thank you for showing your support for PSP. Today's event is to launch our newly formed PSP. We want to introduce our party and some of the people behind it to Singaporeans. The party secretary general, Dr. Tan Ching Bok, and my other comrades will speak on other key messages that we want to share with you today. But as an introduction to the party, I would just like to touch on two aspects of PSP. One, how the party came about from the perspective of a founding member and why we name it the Progress Singapore Party. First, how did PSP come about? You all will know that Dr. Tan stood in the PE2011 and lost by a narrow margin of 0.348% or just over 7,000 votes. I was his campaign manager then. After the defeat, well, we thought, never mind, we have put up a good fight and lost with our heads up high, having fought a dignified campaign. We then immediately began planning for the next presidential election due in 2017. But then it was not to be. The constitution was amended to make PE 2017 a reserve election for Malay candidates only. And what happened after that and how it ended in a walkover, we all know full well. We thought, well, maybe Dr. Tan was not meant to be our president after all. And all of us who were in his PE team were preparing to go into retirement with him. But Doc was not ready to go into retirement as yet. He could have retired comfortably, and he was, but he was troubled by what he saw of the political scene here. This discomfort was reinforced by feedback he received from Singaporeans from all walks of life he met. <laughs> Some he knew well, others are just ordinary people on the streets, like us, who approach him. Some even went so far as to plead to him, save Singapore. He was humbled, but he really wanted to make Singapore a better place for our future generations. Okay. Now, he will tell you more about this later on in his speech. So he told us he wanted to re-enter politics. We thought he was joking. But he requested his PE team to support him. And without hesitation, almost the whole team accepted the challenge, including me. Okay. We then look at various options for him to re-enter politics. Shall we join an existing opposition party, take over an existing party, or form his own party. After months of careful evaluation of all options, he chose to form his own party. And fellow Singaporeans, that was the genesis of the Progress Singapore Party. Okay. Now we applied to the ROS to register the party on the 16th of January this year. And slightly more than two months later, we received the approval on the 28th of March. Now next, I will tell you why we chose the name Progress Singapore Party. 
Now, progress is one of the five ideals depicted in the five stars on our flag. It is also one of the goals stated in our pledge. But more importantly, we may have achieved economic progress from a third world to a first world country, but we have not progressed socio-politically in many other areas. We need to bring Singapore to the next level of progress. Firstly, we need progress in political maturity. After more than 50 years, we still have a predominantly one-party parliament. We need more opposition voices in parliament to provide a more effective check and balance on the government. If we have more than one third opposition MPs in parliament, our constitution will be less easily amended and bills will be debated more robustly instead of just being rushed through. Secondly, we need progress in the freedom of choice. For example, in the last presidential election, many Singaporeans were unhappy that they were not given a choice to elect the president. Not only was it a reserved election, it was a walkover. Thirdly, we need progress in the freedom of speech. Now, Article 14 of our Constitution guarantees Singapore citizens the right to freedom of speech. But in reality, there are many restrictions imposed by laws. We need to give more latitude to Singaporeans to speak up without fear of repercussions of any sort. The recent introduction of POFMA makes this even more difficult. Lastly, we need progress in transparency. For example, we need more transparency in our reserves we need to know how much we have in our reserves and how they are performing on an annual basis. The reserves belong to Singaporeans and just like any other shareholders in a company, they have a right to know the true performance of the investments from the reserves. This should not be deemed as state secrets and kept from Singaporeans who are really the owners of the reserves. So you see, fellow Singaporeans, we have progressed not only in terms, well, we need progress not only in terms of the economy, but also social politically to make this country truly a home we can be proud of. Now, I would like to end with a personal story from Dr. Tan. He told us he was reminded of what our late Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, once famously said, and I quote, and even from my sick bed, even if we are going to lower me into the grave and I feel that something is going wrong, I will get up. Well, Dr. Tan is still very much alive and he has gotten up from his retirement seat. And with that, I hope Singaporeans will be awakened too. I wish you a pleasant morning with the rest of the party launch program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah Chair of PLT, Grand Sweet Tran. The next speaker coming up on stage started his career with the Singapore Fire Brigade in 1975. He's a professionally trained engineer with experiences from various MNCs. Currently, he's a consultant specializing in fire and life safety audit and design work. And he'll be speaking in Malay. See his team member. Let's welcome him, Mr. Abu. Isn't he fabulous? I can see that you all enjoy yourself before we came in. That's a very good sign. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the strong support you have accorded to us. We are touched by your kind gesture. Please allow me to speak to our Malay audience in the Malay language. Would that be okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Rakan-rakan seperjuangan, penyokong-penyokong yang setia serta para hadirin yang dihormati sekalian. Hari ini kita telah menempah sejarah 
Dengan jayanya kami mendapat melancarkan parti politik kami di bawah pimpinan seorang negarawan, Dr. Tan Chin Bok. Seperti mana, seperti mana para hadirin maklum, kami telah mengadakan sidang akhbar Jumaat lepas dan sambutan daripada media berdana sungguh menggalakkan. Juga sambutan dari orang ramai yang melepaskan sokongan mereka melalui media sosial dan juga secara pribadi atas niat murni parti kami. Dalam sidang akhbar itu, kami telah mendedahkan kelemahan-kelemahan PAP sekarang ini yang mengamalkan polisi-polisi yang berbeza daripada semangat tulen perintis perintis PAT, PAP masa dulu. Kami menekankan kita harus membetulkan segala kesilapan lepas dan membina semula masyarakat ke arah ketelusan, tanggungjawab dan kemerdekaan. Dr. Tan Waktu jadi anggota Parlimen dahulu telah mengambil tindakan sendiri tanpa gentar untuk menyuarakan saranan-saranan agar pemerintah memberi pandangan lebih berat terhadap kepentingan rakyat sendiri. Kami juga berusaha seberapa daya untuk mengawal kos sari hidup dan menentukan yang rakyat Singapura mampu memiliki flat-flat HDB. PSP mahu melihat penyertaan Melayu dalam pelbagai kemahiran dan bidang terdapat dalam Angkatan Bersejata Singapura. Dan pada itu juga kami berusaha bekerjasama dengan masyarakat Melayu sendiri untuk mempertingkatkan lagi prestasi pelajar-pelajar Melayu kita agar setanding dengan kaum-kaum lain. Sebagai penutup, kami hargai sokongan tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian dan kami memberi jaminan yang kami akan memperjuangkan kehidupan rakyat yang lebih sempurna. Niat kami adalah untuk membawa masuk seramai mungkin anggota-anggota pembangkang ke dalam parlimen dan menafikan dua per tiga kerusi parlimen pemerintah sekarang ini. Kami berazam untuk menjadikan Singapura sebuah negara yang maju lagi sejahtera. Saya sudahi dengan wabillahi taufik wal hidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Mr. Abdul Rahman. Okay folks, now it is time for the interactive poll. Can you all please open up the browser on your mobile phones uh, CC members, you'll be too slow, slow if you want to, and go to this website which is called pollev.com. And the user ID is PSP282. Some of you that came earlier have already answered the question. The first question is PSP stands for Progress Singapore Party. True or false? Those that haven't answered yet, you may do so right now. Many have already answered, and we'll take a quick poll and see what is the answer that comes up for this one. Can anyone have trouble logging in? It's not an app, you don't need to download, you just have to open up your browser and go to the website called Poll TV. And yes, everyone here has answered, they have reached 98%, 97, 98%. Everyone knows what PSP stands for, is Progress Party Singapore. True or false? 97 to 98% says it's true. For the 3% there who says they are not sure, uh, please correct your answer in GP to, to true, okay? There can be no doubts about that. Alright, the second question that we have coming up for you is quite unique. The second question is coming up right now. The second question is, which constituency are you from? Can you click on the map? You open up the thing and then you click on the map and it will show in a while the doors will be coming up. So whichever constituency you are in, you just tap on that area and your uh, feedback will be resulting, will be shown up on the thing also that dots will be coming up. I'm not sure if you can see the dots, but uh, it will help us to know who are the people here today and which constituency are from our roughly you not know, gives us a page. Helps us in our planning, I guess. It'll be good. So everyone please tap on to uh, if you are from issue that issue are no but you should well, are you all over Singapore you tap huh? uh, just tap uh, which constituency that you are from. Let's see uh, okay any results coming up so far? 
We don't really see anything, we need dots coming up also, the tiny little dots. Can you see the dots? Ah, uh, okay, I don't know this little like, uh, like uh, what do you call it? That symbol. Yeah, like, uh, okay, yeah, it's popping up. Can you see that? Wow, it's popping up on screen. Now, which was in a different color, so it's more visible, but it's not in a different color, so you can't really see that. But uh, it's a pin, yeah, it's like a pin, but then it's a, uh, I see Pine SMC, Bukit Batu, Bukit Panjang, Yuhua, uh, Rani Mars, Otto Pasir in person, um, Mobi, and you know, Mountain SMC, Feng Shan. Okay, so there are people from all over Singapore. You should also survive, yes, all over. And no one from Pulau Ubi, huh? Is, is anyone so same as Pulau Ubi? Still, right? Uh, so I guess they have to take the ferry across, so probably they didn't come here at this point. Or maybe they couldn't get the tickets. And talking about that, for those that join us here this morning, we have an afternoon session for our launch as well. We are doing two sessions. In the morning, it is just here, but for the afternoon session, we are going to broadcast live on Facebook. So please let your friends know later. We'll give you the link. You can send it out to all your friends so that those people who couldn't come for the actual launch are still able to join us via the live feed on Facebook. Okay, have everyone more or less answered the questions? So okay. have done it, do it, okay? If you are not sure how to do it, please ask for help from the person next to you. Okay, we we'll move on to the next speaker now. And the next person that I would like to invite on stage, she is the Assistant Treasurer of PSP. She is a PSC Overseas Merit Scholar who graduated from Cambridge University with a first class honors degree in mathematics. She's worked in the civil service, the administration service, the Ministry of Finance, including the Prime Minister's office, and she's a dedicated professional in the education industry. Speaking in Mandarin, can we all please give a warm welcome to Ms. Hazel今天我想与各位分享一下踏入政坛的一些心路历程或许能为一些正在考虑的人作为参考我年轻时是 我开始觉得我们需要多党制，给人民多一点选择。在2015年的大选之前，我因为对三角战的立场与我的政党不同，便离开了，又见到许多人才，陆陆续续加入了反对党阵营，觉得可以了，比我合适的人多的是，不需要
，所以我希望留给他们一个好榜样，希望能够让他们看见妈妈也努力、勇敢活着的样子。希望大家也能一同来努力，加入新加坡前进党，共同创造一个让我们自豪的新加坡。谢谢。Thank you very much, Hazel. She said towards the end she has two boys. She hopes they grow up to be courageous and live in a freer society. Wonderful, isn't it? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next person I'm going to invite on stage, he's the treasurer of the Progress Singapore Party. He's a chartered accountant and investment specialist. His corporate experience, he has been working with MNC in the regional uh, senior consultant doing auditing and so forth. Yeah, once again, let's put him on. Oh, oh, he's already up here. Let's not come to him. One more time, please, Mr. S. Narayan. Dear uh, invited guests, uh, members of uh, Progress Singapore Party, I see a lot of Richard guys. Thank you, and uh, friends. A very good morning to all of you. First and foremost, I'd like to thank each and every one of you coming today to share with us this meaningful journey to create a compassionate, inclusive and endearing Singapore. Thank you very much. <laughs> Progress Singapore Party's fundamental principles are transparency, accountability and independence. And we will steadfastly guard these principles. Now, I would like to say my message in Tamil. Thank you. The Nanban Singapore Kudimakale, Singapore Muni Trakachi, Adigara Purva Tokatil, Kalantu Kondameke, and another Manamanda Nandri, Teru to Kulire. Singapore Muni Trakachi, Irakatande, the March Master, Randai Patambodil, and Rasiel Kachiaga Padivis Ayapa together. The Sela Madangal Kul, Palasingapura Yangal Kachi, Rachingalak, Walwana Adraway, Vali Padata Munandulaga. Singapore Munator Kachi, our Gali, Unarugale, Umayaga Purin the Gulu, in the Nambike, Anitanamaga, Yirkere, Melum, our Gali, Walkail, Membatak, or Nalla Taratai, Walanda Mudium in the Nambike Wunde, our Gali, Pilekum. Pera pelikal itu, orang selain dari itu galat dia unda kemudian, dia tirvimana nambi ke yang mundur. Ipo di Singapura gan, itu kalau mika mukia mana peracunan, velai itu per. Virayana tolinut per matranggal karena maga, pala velai gali itu per nulana, mikum badik kapatta kulu tolir balan erga. Abang gel, adiknya niti tebe gelai, kundu, opit tebe gelai, gelam kunumban gelai, kundu lana. Pudia belai, sulalil, porundu baderk, maru parisi lana, sey baderk kana, wife gelai, wadangu bader, tay kabira, mudhalal legal inda, waidan, tulil legal gelai, belai ke amat ter, tayara aga, irikka bendu, inda item penda. Tuli lari lalil, palarai, velik, amat teruk berpedar kah, arah sanggam, mudah lali lalik, valuana saligalai, saligalai lalai, wadangga bendu, Singapura lalik, yepodum, velai wajib lalil, mudah munur emai wadangga padu bendu, tiran tuup lal, kadek kah ada bodoh dan, vali nanti nerei niemik ke muriom. Wali nanti nak ke, ini kerana yang kita dam, itu itu memilai. Anak ulahil genda pagi lium, wadah kemaga yang rukum, nama dek kudi makalai nama modelil kawani kawendu. Singapura gelai, parikum matror, perundang mana percenai, ye podium hari kerikum, wad keisalab, silar irande, allah de mudr, velai gelai seiyah bandiya derkum. Indah nombor galin selalu galai korai pada rukum, awal gal, warumana nilai galai, 
உயர்த்துவதற்கும் வழிகளை கவனித்த மூலம் நாம் அவர்களை கவனிக்க வேண்டும் அதிகரித்து வரும் வருமான சமத்துவின்மை போக்கு உண்மையில் சிங்கப்பூருக்கு மிகவும் கவலை அளிக்கும் சூழ்நிலை நாம் அதை சரியாக நிர்வகிக்கவில்லை என்றால் அதை வெவ்வேறு வகுப்பினரிடையே அவநம்பிக்கையும் ஏற்படுத்தக்கூடும் அல்லது வர்க்க போராட்டத்திற்கு கூட வழிவகுக்கும் அர்த்தமுள்ள வாழ்க்கையை நடத்துவதற்கு சமுதாயத்தின் கீழ்மட்டங்களுக்கு நாம் ஒரு நல்ல ஊதியம் கொடுக்க வேண்டும் மேலும் அவர்கள் சிங்கப்பூரின் செழிப்பை உள்ளடக்கிய உணர்வார்கள் சிங்கப்பூர் முன்னேற்ற கட்சி அடிப்படை கொள்கைகள் வெளிப்படத்தன்மை பொறுப்பு கூற மற்றும் சுதந்திரம் எனது தனிப்பட்ட அனுபவத்தை அரசாங்க அதிகாரிகளுடன் தொடர்பு படுத்த விரும்புகிறேன் அங்கு பொறுப்புக்குரிய அதிக முன்னேற்றம் தேவைப்படுகிறது நான் கடந்த இருபத்தி ஐந்து ஆண்டுகளாக ஒரு பங்கு தகராக தகராக இருக்கிறேன் இரண்டாயிரத்தி பதினஞ்சாம் ஆண்டில் பங்கு சந்தையில் உள்ள நம்பிக்கையை பற்றிய கவலைகளை முன்னிலைப்படுத்த பங்குதாரர் சமூகத்தை சேர்ந்த சில உறுப்பினர்கள் அதிகாரிகளை சந்தித்தனர் எங்கள் பல ஆண்டு அனுபவத்தின் அடிப்படையில் எங்கள் பங்கு சந்தையில் நம்பிக்கையை பாதி புதுப்பிக்க பல பரித்துறைகளை நாங்கள் வழங்கியுள்ளோம் துரதிருஷ்டமாக இவை கவனிக்காமல் சென்றது அதிகாரிகள் செலப்படுத்திய செயல்படுத்திய கொள்கைகள் திட்டமிட்டபடி செயல்படவில்லை சில கொள்கைகள் சிறந்த நோக்கத்துடன் கூட தோல்வி அடைகின்ற என்பதை நாங்கள் புரிந்து கொள்கிறோம் தோல்வியை எதிர்கொள்ளும் போது விரைவான மாற்றம் மற்றும் தீர்மான நடவடிக்கைகள் எடுக்கப்பட வேண்டும் இப்போது எனது இருபத்தி ஐந்து ஆண்டு கால அனுபவத்தில் அடிப்படையில் எங்கள் பங்கு சந்தையை இது போன்ற வர்த்தத்தக்க நிலையில் நான் காணவில்லை பல சிங்கப்பூர்கள் பில்லியன் கணக்கான வெள்ளிகள் இழந்தனர் இந்த நிலைமைக்கு பொறுப்பு கூறலின் கடுமையான பற்றாக்குறையை ஏற்பட்டுள்ளது மற்றும் பல சிங்கப்பூர்கள் அதன் சுமைகளை தாங்குகிறார்கள் சிங்கப்பூர் முன்னேற்ற கட்சி எங்கள் சக சிங்கப்பூர்களுக்கும் நேர்மையுடனும் இறக்கத்துடனும் சேவை செய்ய முன்வந்துள்ளோம் உங்கள் வாழ்க்கையை மேம்படுத்த படாமுயற்சி எடுத்துக்கொள்வோம் உங்கள் ஆதரவும் நம்பிக்கையும் வீண் போகாது உங்கள் வலுவான ஆதரவை கட்சிக்கு கொடுத்தமைக்கு மீண்டும் மிக்க நன்றி வணக்கம் தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் Thank you, Mr. Professor Prabhu, the treasurer of the PAP. Okay, folks, it's time to open up your mobile phones and open up your web browser again. It is time for the interactive segment. Okay, for those of you that have forgotten, it's called poleev.com and the username is PSP282 to log into the web browser. And the question that will be coming up will show right now. The question that we have is what do the five fronts of the party symbol represent? Have some fun answering the questions. <coughs> what do the five fronts of the PSP logo stand for? Those of you who cannot read what's on the screen because you're too far back, stands for democracy, equality, justice, peace and progress. The five fronts also represent our multi racial and inclusive society consisting of the four main racial groups and new citizens. So that's the answer that for you. What do the five fronts of the PSP logo stand for? All of the above? Oh, okay. 
Okay, so 50%, 50%, all of you above. You can see uh, there's the power of digital media today. The poll is being taken, and you can see the percentage jumping up or down, all of the above. Uh, hint, hint, the last one is the correct one. Uh, hint, hint. <laughs> hint, hint. Unfortunately, I don't have prizes to give. I think we have a prize or a gift for everyone, which is our goodie bag. So remember to collect it later on the way out. Huh? We are very polite Singaporeans. We will not write, we will queue nicely, okay? Alright, folks, that's part of the interactive segment. And now it's time for me to bring on the next speaker, who's a CEC member of Progress Singapore Party. She's an educator and counsellor with a Bachelor of Science Honours in Government and Economics LSE. She's also had experience working with the MES, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and has done investment banking and management consulting. And she's also in the process of getting her Master of Science in counselling. Right? Something like what? Wow, power, huh? Wow. Okay, let's go. Singaporeans, it's wonderful to see all of you here at PSP's launch today. I would like to start by asking, how can the younger generation make sure that their voices are heard, that their views and opinions count? How can we ensure that every Singaporean's voice is important and not just those of the rich and powerful? Only one way, and that is at the elections. I grew up never having to vote because it was always a walkover. In fact, the first time I had a chance to vote, it was in 2011, and I was one of the candidates for my constituency. So my first vote was for myself and my team. The reason I joined the opposition is because I believe deeply in your right to choose your government. This is the way all Singaporeans can participate in Singapore's journey of progress. PSP wants the voice of the youth to be reflected at these tremendously important events, at elections for the Government of Singapore. We propose that the voting age in Singapore be lowered to 18 years old. Young people... <laughs> young people are the future of this country and should have a say in what they want that future to be. By 18, young people today have very clear opinions and ideas on what they want to see in Singapore, how they want to get there, and who they feel will be able to lead them in that direction. In this, we are already behind the times. Most countries around the world lowered their voting age to 18 in the 1970s. Malaysia changed their voting age to 18 this year. This is the 21st century, but Singapore politics is still stuck in the 20th century. We at PSP feel that too many people are being left behind. We can change that, and we must change that. We need to stand together and help our government to see it's not about the money, because you can't pay for passion. I moved. I moved from being an investment banker and management consultant to being a teacher, a counsellor, and I love what I do. It's not about the money, because money cannot buy passion. Talking about money, as you know, our highest minister is paid about 43 times an average Singaporean salary. An entry-level minister earns half of that. So the problem with a million dollar paycheck is that it puts our ministers in their ivory towers while the people are left way back here on our little red dot. It makes for the wrong incentives and the wrong statistics. My kids are studying averages for math in school and even they know that high numbers can skew the average wage or household income in Singapore and it does not reflect what the majority of people are earning. Thus, the minister's high salaries raise the average wages and make it look as though we as a nation are doing well. It also makes them afraid to take risks, afraid to disagree, and afraid to lose their jobs. Hmm, they have a lot of fear too. <laughs> 
So there is no accountability from the top and no resigning from their jobs even when a big mistake is made. One, that if it happened in other countries, the minister in charge would have resigned already. Yeah. Maybe our ministers cannot afford to resign. But I must highlight one minister who did resign two years ago because he said it was his dream to start up new venture companies. If more are like him, there is more movement in and out of politics, we will have a much more progressive Singapore. Chang Bok as well is not afraid to resign in order to hold fast to his principles. When instruction came from the top to rename Jurong Hospital to Ng Teng Fong Hospital because the family donated one-tenth of the construction cost, Dr Tan felt this was not right. He tried to suggest naming the hospital after Ong Teng Cheong instead, our first elected president. But somehow, the ministers disagreed. But he felt then, as he does now, it should not be about the money, so he stepped down from the board, because you cannot pay for integrity. You cannot pay for passion, you cannot pay for integrity, and you cannot buy courage. Money does not buy character. In fact, the more you pay, the more you discourage these virtues. So what are we paying for? Intelligence? Friends, I went to Raffles schools, I was in the top classes, I can tell you this, a group of people from different schools all over Singapore, different backgrounds, different experiences, different perspectives, working together, can come up with better ideas than one brilliant person. Yeah. Now why is this relevant to our young people? Because when we believe that each of them is valuable, and we invest in them, listen to them, and give them opportunities, then we empower them and give them hope. The feeling that they matter and the conviction that they can make a difference. This is what we want each of our young people to grow up with. And that leads me to mental health because that's a big issue. Just a few days ago, a depressing piece of news on our rising suicide rates, especially among the young. Friends, a happy childhood lays the foundation for good mental health. But how many of us look at our children in schools today and feel sorry for them? When you talk to our pioneer and Madeka generations, their childhood stories are of climbing trees, kicking footballs, shooting marbles, and catching spiders. Yeah. <laughs> so because they had happy childhoods, they had good memories and a strong belonging to Singapore and they had the resilience and determination and enough hope to make Singapore what it is today. What are we doing to our children, our young people, our only resource? Why is it that for years we kept the percentage of Singaporean students in each cohort at 25%, those who could go to our universities, was only 25% of each cohort? This was known from our research in 2011 but it was confirmed after a WikiLeaks comment from MOE was revealed. Now, under pressure, we are slowly increasing that number, but the government's target for 2020 is only 40%. The corresponding average for the 34 OECD countries, member nations, is 62%, while in Australia, Iceland, and Portugal, more than 90% of high school graduates go to university. Many Singaporean students are turned away, yet the government woos and spends $130 million each year on scholarships for foreign students. I spoke to a sleep specialist from NUH just this week, and he told me that even our preschool children in Singapore are sleep deprived. Not to mention our teenagers, many of whom finish their homework around 2 a.m. only to wake up at 6 a.m. for school. Once, when a Michael Moore documentary on schools in Finland was shown to some students from one of our top schools, they cried. The first thing that was mentioned in this video, no homework. <laughs> if you ask the teachers in Finland what they want for their children, they will say they want the children to be happy. I can speak as a teacher. Happy teachers make for happy children. And what does our government do? On top of refusing to decrease class sizes despite a falling enrollment,
they decide to charge teachers for parking in schools. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, does our government believe that our people are our only resource? Actions speak louder than words. Let me end up by highlighting PSP's vision statement, a united Singapore progressing with compassion. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to see a united Singapore progressing into the future together. Let us ensure that we are not judged or divided by our race, our language, or our social or economic background. Let us protect the young and the weak in our society. This is the government's job, what we trusted them to do. Mr. Heng Sui Kiat, our soon-to-be Prime Minister, says that the PAP has delivered on a better life for Singaporeans. He says that Singaporeans will know who to place their trust in. In this, I agree with Mr. Heng. Singaporeans know, and it is time to gather the courage and stand together as one. Thank you. Currently, his corporate experience was in IT solutions and also pet care. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome one of the founders of the Progressive Party, Lee Jong Hui and So, uh, Michelle started a really, really good speech, so it would be a bit much of a challenge for me to match up with her, but I'm going to do my best, alright? So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is something I'm going to deliver for you. <laughs> so, on the behalf of our party and party members, thank you all for joining us today. It's our privilege to have all of you here. I'm Lee Yong Hui, and I'm the Assistant Secretary General of the Progress Singapore Party. So, I'm just going to share a little bit about my background. As a child, I grew up in a kampong at the foot of Bukit Timah Hill. And there was still active, uh, active granite blasting back then. I also spent much of my time playing the West Coast Saraja market as well. And when I was free, I was delivering coffee powder all around Singapore with my father. And I got the opportunity to see Singapore while riding at the back of our van. Like many of you, I've been through several hardships myself. And I understand the difficulties and dilemmas that you face today. This is why I decided to step forward and do something about it. I helped Dr. Tan in the 2011 presidential elections as a volunteer. He contacted me through my father, who served as his grassroots since the beginning of the Araja days. It was through my father's good work that I saw the spirit of seven people. I eventually joined Dr. Tan's call team in 2015 and became his political secretary in 2018. It was also in 2018 when Dr. Tan and I decided to come together with 10 brief souls to help create the Progress Singapore Party. The purpose of creating the Progress Singapore Party was to build a common platform for Singaporeans like you, who believe in realizing a better Singapore and wanting to do that together with us. There is a need for new political leadership in Singapore which is not only visionary and far-sighted, but also one that governs with the purpose to improve all aspects of life for Singaporeans. Political parties and leaders must be capable of imagining what is beyond the horizons, and more importantly, are able to rally Singaporeans behind a common vision. This means that this common vision has to be distilled, articulated, and presented so that all Singaporeans know where Singapore is heading. And what is the Singapore that everyone can look forward to? Singapore has benefited immensely from the hard work of all Singaporeans in the early days. But we are now at a juncture where we need new leaders to bring all of us forward together. This is why Progress Singapore Party is standing here before you today. 
Singapore's legacy cannot be squandered. Progress Singapore Party wants to build upon the foundation that we have and involve you in building a collective vision of Singapore. We know that there will always be economic turbulence ahead, but we believe that by having a collective vision, it will tide us through the tough times ahead. We must be united in the belief that Singapore can be so much more. Singapore can be a model echo city for others to follow. Singapore can be more compassionate towards hardworking Singaporeans who are struggling to make a living wage. Singapore can exercise more courage on global issues such as climate change, racism and inequality of all forms. Singapore can be a leader in developing new standards for sustainability and contribute global solutions to the issues that the world may collectively face in the future. And we can do that together through pursuing better indicators of living standards beyond the GDP and other indicators that matter more in our present society. We can do that together by providing more transparency in why public policies are designed the way they are. And I would like to emphasize on this. Politics and policies must make sense to the common people. We can do that together with our strong civil service and create better policies or be prepared to slaughter sacred power policies that perpetuate social inequality and re-examine divisive policies. But here's the key. We have to do this together. To achieve this compassionate, more equal society that we are talking about and the vision we want for Singapore, all of us have to work towards it together. The outcome of our efforts, good or bad, pretty or ugly, belongs not just to the Progressive Singapore Party, it belongs to all of us. We are only as good as all Singaporeans are. What I'm doing, along with the brave souls that join us, is just taking a lead. We know that it's going to be hard, since we have long lost the mechanism for frank and candid discussions of politics and policies. We know that it's going to be hard to strike a balance between giving Singaporeans their fair share of fruits of labour and not being seen as populists. We know that it's not going to be easy to convince Singaporeans to take a leap of faith with us. But we're still going to do this because we only want what's better for Singapore and Singaporeans. For the love of our country and people, please join us today. Majula Singapore. Thank you very much, Dan. Mr. Lee, who is the Assistant Secretary General and one of the founding members of PSP. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat because we are going to show you a video. Okay, the house lights will be dim. This video is made by the party, but not about the party. Instead, this video captures from the everyday Singaporean what Singapore identity is all about, what it means to be a Singaporean. So as the lights have been dim, we will be playing this video and many of you are seeing this for the first time. Enjoy this video made by the BSP. Thank you.
if you really go into the sea to be a most common thing that you can in long term, you need to hire salary. And this is the reason why, as a university student right now, they will apply for courses that supposedly give them the highest starting income. And a lot of people will go into professions that they do not enjoy because of the highest starting income. And this usually comes with poor life balance, it comes with poor working conditions. I, I see a lot of my peers, a lot of my seniors even, go out there and actually suffer in the workplace. We are known to be a rich country, but yet we have a lot of old people working. And uh, yeah, some of my friends from overseas, they ask me, yeah, your country is so rich, and why do you have old people working so hard, collecting cardboards and selling tissues? When we focus on like the diversity in Singapore, we look at race, we look at religion, but what about other things like say age or gender or disabilities or mental health or other conditions that people might have? The government has been reusing the same answers from the past 50 years. But I think in the new world that we have, these answers are no longer sufficient. The government needs a new set of answers to deal with a new set of problems. And this is why we need more alternative voices. We need more people with different opinions, with different perspectives on how we can make this a society for all of us. Ulu place, huh? 
and a member of parliament for 26 years. He was the head of the government heat and unit, chairman of various town councils and CDCs, advocated for free PHDB parking on Sundays. He also advocated the use of our CPF for our children's education, and he won 88% uh, of the polls for the GE in 2001. Uh, it gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce to you the founder of the Progress Singapore Party. He's the Secretary General. Put your hands together. Aging must change glasses. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Kuei Ta Jia, Tao Shan Hao. Selamat pagi. Barakah. I must confess, I'm going to speak in English. As I stand before you, I cannot but feel honoured and humbled that so many Singaporeans want me to lead a political party. At my age, my friends urged me to retire and enjoy life. But I'm happy and glad I did not heed their advice. I chose this option because I believe I'm able to do something for the country. So indeed, it is an honor. The task ahead is challenging, but I love this country like many of you. So to shy away from doing something, especially when I am aware that something isn't right, will not be true to myself. That is not my style. When I know something is wrong, I want to make it right. Over the years, we have witnessed many changes, some good and some not so good. Most worryingly, there seems to be an erosion of trust between the people and the government. I say it because I live through the 70s and the 80s and witnessed many happenings. We went from Kampong to HDB flat, from a lesser educated population to an educated one. Coming through all the hardships, we were then proud to be Singaporeans. But this time around, from the many conversations, meetings, and interactions with Singaporeans, I recognize that there has been an erosion of our national pride. If you look around, you may marvel at the vast infrastructure of offices, buildings, hospitals, shopping centers, and malls. You would have thought that this is a great country with happy Singaporeans. Then, if that is the case, why are we here sitting in this room with Singaporeans looking at me and hoping to hear an alternative to a better way of life? Something is not right. 
beneath this beautiful facade is an underlying taste of this quiet. A Reuters report notes that as many as 63% of Singaporeans fear expressing their political opinions openly, even on the internet, because this would get me in trouble with the authorities. This is like quote. In this survey of 30 plus countries, we are second from the bottom only to Turkey. Fear is very much present. How has this affected our Singaporeans' lifestyle? When we study the extent and depth of this fear factor, it affects so many of us. We do not, we do not even realize how much of our behavior it alters. People fear for their jobs, their promotions, their grants, the rental premises, and getting sued. Now I worry whether my old school will recognize me <laughs> because I've crossed to the other side. Now this is wrong. Our country, we must not behave like this. You know, Singaporeans complain in whispers. My patient whispered to me how worried they are. I said, there's no need to worry. It's only within these four walls, only you and me. But yet, they whisper. How sad, right? <laughs> they look around to see who is listening before talking and hesitate to discuss government policies openly. But we should not behave like ostriches, burying our heads in the sand and pretending nothing is wrong. If we act like ostriches, ask yourself, is that really loyalty or patriotism? Speaking up is not ingratitude or behavior or betrayal. Lee Kuan Yew made it clear when he asked me to join his party. I told him I was not enamored with the PAP then. You know what he said? I don't want yes men, he said. So I joined him. And I did not hesitate to speak up when I disagree. Singapore is not best served by our silence. So what is it that has gotten to so, got so many people upset? What has created that doubt about the future of Singapore? I spoke of this in a recent press conference last week. And I want to emphasize it again. The style of government has changed. The processes of government has gone astray because there has been an erosion of the three pillars of good governance, namely transparency, independence, and accountability. This is the message I want to sell to you all. We must have all this. I have already given example of appointments to top government jobs. Should these top government jobs be to people related to the cabinet, for example? It never, it's never a question of are they able to do the job? It's always the question of should they be appointed? Yeah. Now, seeds of doubt are so and mistrust and resentment breeds. The government has chosen to respond to these grumbles with simple denials. Ask yourself if any of your PAP MPs have spoken up in Parliament on these three, met on these three very important uh, issues. They are not listening. Because of this, people have doubts about the government and the ability to trust 
the government is badly shaken. Singaporeans feel anxious and concerned for jobs, our health, your children, our retirement, even our homes. Now, we cannot allow this current style of managing the country to go unchallenged. So let us step up to ensure that we do not continue this way when there are alternatives to serve Singapore and Singaporeans better. So what, what is a Singapore that we want to see? I think this is a question we'll ask ourselves. We want to see young people filled with hope, purpose, and well connected to a country they feel rooted to. There's much they can give to Singapore. They must feel that they belong here, a sense of home. If you feel a stranger in your own home or unwelcome, you will take your talent, your dreams, elsewhere. How can we engage our youth and show them that they are valued, our precious resource? To begin with, we must include them in our plan for progress. Allow those 18 and above to vote in our general elections. This was mentioned by Michelle. She spoke well. She gave you reasons why this 18-year-old should be allowed to vote. You see, at 18, they are old enough to drive. The girls enter university. And the boys enter into national service. Since they have a duty to defend our country, these 18-year-olds should also have the right to elect their leaders. Because sometimes our boys will be stationed overseas. We want to make sure that the people who put them all over the world must, they must have a right to vote their own leaders. As I said, since they have a duty to defend our country, these 18-year-olds should have the right to elect the leaders. They are mature enough to take on the responsibility of active citizenship, citizen, citizenry to understand policies and vote for the government they want. This is the voting age of most countries around the world, in all of the ASEAN countries. We have heard it said that the young are apolitical, not interested. I have not found this to be very true. But of course, it will mean more to them if they are a part of our democratic system. So like I said, we must allow them to vote at age 18. Now, our working population, I think <coughs> job priority for them is very important. We, Singapore, have made many arrangements, many countries on, on this immigration and this jobs <coughs> arrangement. Now, PSP will call for a review of the India-Singapore Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Agreement. It's a very long and very big term. In short, it's called SICA. This agreement was negotiated by our current DPM, Heng Sui Ken, and signed in 2005. Among the terms, SICA allowed the free movement of professionals in 127 sectors to enter and work in Singapore. This has brought a lot of unhappiness with Singaporean PMETs who feel vulnerable in their jobs and are anxious for their future. We need the government to publish a balance sheet on SICA to show how Singapore 
and Singaporeans have benefited from this agreement. How many local jobs have gone to Indian professionals and how many Singaporeans have gone to India? We need accountability. How can the government help Singaporeans feel a greater sense of job security? To face the challenges of the future. Besides reconsidering the current foreign workers' policies, we suggest that more in-depth training be linked to jobs, so that after completing the training programs, trainees are matched with secure job offers. For vocational workers, their wages must reflect the skills and difficulty of labour. To be skilled at a craft should be accepted as an alternative path of success. The government should not just be focused on growing the GDP. We must also create a good workable business environment for investor confidence and support our SMEs to do business well. Their successes grow. Their successes contribute greatly to the economy. We should do more to support our SMEs and homegrown companies. For example, preferences must be given to our local companies in awarding government contracts. Well-established government-linked companies should focus more on overseas expansion and less on competing with our SMEs domestically. In addition, in addition, Singapore companies must help one another, esteem Singapore, instead of competing when overseas. This is the nationalistic spirit we must adopt when we go overseas. You watch how the Japanese companies come to Singapore, how the Korean companies come to Singapore. They are all together, they back each other, and they get a lot of government support. Another issue that troubles me greatly is our fertility rate. Now at a low of 1.16. Now this is a very serious issue. We have tried addressing this with money and it has not worked. The fertility rate continues to fall. PSP will study this issue with a new mindset and have the political will to do what is necessary. It entails a lot, an all-round look at all aspects of life, from housing cost, design. Your flats maybe have to re -re have to be redesigned. Because the younger chaps, you want them to have a happy life, have to have more children, the environment must be good. To childcare support, Infra South care support infrastructures to education and jobs. How do we make sure that marriage and parenthood is a satisfying is a, is satisfying experience and a source of happiness and strength instead of stress? It is a very challenging issue, but too important to put on the back burner just because we have failed because before. We must really take this fertility issue very seriously or else there will be so few Singaporeans left. For our elderly, I think it's one of our big concerns, our elderly population. Because when I, when I look at what, was, what the United Nations projection on Singapore's population, see our population will reach about 6 0.58 million by 2050. Now it's not very far, it's quite near. Now let me tell you, this 6.58 million, a staggering 47% of our population will be 65 years and above. In other words, one in two will be old people. We must start planning for this now. We must make sure that our, pop that our population ages we are still as healthy as possible. But as you know, healthcare costs are a real concern for everyone. 
We need to take a hard, honest look at our current healthcare delivery system. We cannot treat aging in isolation. It is a part of a total healthcare system. If you ask me, currently our healthcare is primarily hospital based. You notice everybody is sick, all run to hospital. That's why our hospitals all crowded. Now we must move away from this and manage our work, our aging population and the and population in general outside the hospital system. We need to move towards a preventive primary health care model. It's a big, big shift. This requires a shift in funding from hospital-based health care funding to primary preventive health care funding. Hospital-based hospital health care funding, hospital-based health care is very expensive. You all are experiencing it now. You must not, I hope none of you will have to sell your house to pay for your medical bills. It's a tragedy. And PSP will make sure we'll have a carefully well-planned healthcare system to present to you all in due course. You see, hospital-based healthcare, as I said, is very expensive. Primary care is more affordable and will have a deeper reach into the community. This, however, will require mindset change and again a strong political will to make this important change. As a doctor, I know I have ideas of what I want to do. So, you can trust us, they will prove it. we will definitely come up with a good plan. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, people want to build a good Singapore with a trusted political system. And again, I go back to my three fundamental principles. Transparency, independence and accountability. Now, these are fundamentals. If you let go of these three principles, this country will go down. If these three pillars are in place, we will have a government that we can trust. It will be not personality based. It will be a robust and resistant system. We need to rebuild trust and increase confidence that people and country matter most in our policy decisions. I want to clear some, I want at this point to clear something I said at a press conference last week in reply to a reporter who asked about my succession plan. I said my greatest fear was that If I am no longer around, ESP must not collapse. This fear was one of the considerations that held me back from forming a political party. But what has since happened is that many men and women came forward to join me.
They wanted to build a stronger Singapore. Their presence gave me hope and confidence. Sorry. It is their commitment and courage that made me possible, that made it possible for this launch to take place today. I realize. that I do not fear anymore. These courageous men and women decided to come out and do the right thing. They are people of courage. Many have been criticized and ridiculed as old fighters, untrained, raw. But these are brave and courageous men. I call them champions of courage for the next generation. Their hearts are in the right place. They want to serve the country and the people. Ordinary people with right motives Many expect me to have the same state of scholars and civil servants in my party. They want me to apply the same PAP mold that has led us to this point. We have had an endless supply of scholars, generals and intellectuals. Yet why are we here now? We trusted them to do the right thing. Yet the outcome has led to a deep unhappiness and dissatisfaction. We need to have a mindset change. In fact, you all must also change. Because you expect me to change, you all must change. Government needs to include a wide variety of people from all walks of life to, rep to represent all of us. We have to look beyond paper qualifications and look at the heart. Don't let others tell you that because you don't have the paper qualification and qualification and scholarships, then you can't do it. I'm telling you today, you can do it. Because there's an inner strength in every one of you. Bring up that strength in you. Serve this country. My team will work hard. Perhaps do some personal opportunities for themselves. Take the knocks. Learn from their mistakes. But they are not afraid. The PSP will nurture a generation of Singaporeans to stand up for what they believe in without fear or favour. We are starting an evolution of change. Yeah. Not a revolution. I hope many of you here today will come and join us. The PM Heng Sui Kiat says that we should avoid adversarial politics. 
That is very interesting, right? Because seeing and doing are two different things. You know, I, I remembered once, one, I remembered our Prime Minister Lee Siang Lung said sometime in 2008. If there, there were many oppositions in Parliament, he would have to spend all his time thinking how to fix the opposition. <laughs> Now that sounds very adversarial politics to me. So I'm glad to note that DPM Heng is taking a different approach. Now not being with you does not mean I'm against you, right? We should, we should have this philosophy. We are all Singaporeans. We, should agree, we can agree, we can disagree. But we are all Singaporeans, never mind. Because the best outcome is when we debate the issue, okay? Now, VPM also said, I contradicted myself when I cited the example of the debate in Parliament on 38 Oxley Rice as an example of lack of transparency. Now, his idea of transparency is to have it debated in Parliament surrounded by the overwhelming majority of his own party members with no right reply from the other parties. Drama. Lee Sian Yang was not in the house to explain his position. In fact, was Parliament the right place for this debate? So where is the transparency and accountability? It shows that his very understanding of transparency is deeply flawed. And that is very troubling. Because sometimes they don't even know a wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you about the areas that PSP will be championing in broad terms. You can also visit our website in time to learn more. In fact, if you see around here, all these new devices, media cube, I've got no idea. <laughs> but the young, this is that, what you all are seeing here. I have this young group of people of coming to see me, to help me. All this, today's event would not be possible. So PSP will work again for better accountability, independence of key institutions, require transparency, reduce income inequality, ensure retirement adequacy, very important, lower cost of living, educate our people for the future economy, and make public housing affordable. PSP is fully aware of the many issues worrying Singaporeans, like good paying jobs, contradicting policies of CPF and housing, in in income inequality, rising health care costs, and cost of living among many others. I'm sorry I repeat. We want to review these issues extensively, but with available data. Don't just argue from what you read from the newspaper reports and so on. <laughs> we must have the data. And the data means you have to get us into Parliament. Right. Right. We must just not talk without good information. Then people will respect us that we are really serious in what we want to do. And we will announce all this comprehensively in our GE manifesto. Many people ask me, though, why do you tell me this, tell me this? Then I'm a poor strategist, right? We must, yes, right. I must keep many things close to my chest. Thank you.
Now, Singaporeans know that currently the economy is uncertain, and we have to realize, uh, looking at all the reading for a newspaper and hearing all the news, the economy is going to be in a very difficult state. We may have to swallow bitter pills, bitter medicine, and tighten our belts, but our history demonstrates that we are a tough people. We put our trust in our previous leaders, Lee Kuan Yew and Go, and Go King Sui, amongst many others, and they pressed on and they brought us forward. But I'm not so sure about our current leaders. <laughs> now, the Singaporeans were made promises in relation to the HDB flats, the CPF, but the markers keep moving and shifting. We are worried and frustrated. We want to know that you, our future and our children's future are secure. We need clarity and certainty. Policies need to be formulated for the greater good of the society. And if change is needed to better a society, then PSP will call for it. Thankfully, our nation is blessed with a reliable and efficient civil service. The civil service is meant to be independent of the government. Right. Let's keep it that way. The first priority is to take care of our citizens and make sure things run very well. So do not worry. They will continue to ensure that everything runs smoothly, even without the PAP. Right. However, ever in this present climate, when trust is slipping and suspicion is growing, we need to relook at how things are being done and at how important appointments are made. The system must not only be independent, but must also be seen to be independent. It only stays strong and will be better for it. Let me end with a continuation of my story of how Lee Kuan Yew persuaded me to join him. When I was a young doctor, content in my rural practice. In Amaking, I was called by him to join in the work of nation building. I remember we spoke for some time. I told him I was not enamored with the PAP. He told me, I need you, he said, to come forward to take Singapore to the next level of growth. He impressed me with his passion for the country and the desire to build it up. He said, if you don't come up, don't blame me if I take second-rate people to take your place. His call is a, is a call for good people to come and join him, to bring the country forward. So today, I'm asking you all to, to come and help me, to build a good team for the future. There's still a need for more people to come forward and join me in making a difference to Singapore. Ask yourself, are you satisfied with the levels of transparency, independence and accountability in Singapore? If not, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to ignore it and pass on the problem to your children, your grandchildren, you have a moral duty not to do that. We must leave this place better for our children. So my friends, we need to take responsibility for it today. I invite you to come and join me 
Come, take courage, and let's work to take on the many challenges ahead. For the progress of Singapore, for country, for people. <laughs> I wish all Singaporeans a happy National Day. Yang Yang is a good man. He has his own. He, he, I think he has his own agenda too. But like I said before, PSP is a party for all of all all Singaporeans. So he has also to be very careful not to be taken. 
that he's joining the party because of his own personal agenda. And I think he's a very careful man. He understands my position. And I will still welcome him. If he wants to join, he's very welcome to join PSP. But let's, let, let, let him make a decision himself. He's, he has a difficult job to do. Yes. Next one. Thank you, Doc, for the answer. The second most uh, popular question, I think it's the most popular question. When are you contesting? <laughs> when will you announce your candidates, Dr. Tan? What they want? Yeah. They, why you want me to go on more queues? Is it? <laughs> oh, where do you want me to go? <laughs> no, I'm a strategist. I plan my battles carefully. And I will go anywhere when I think, when I see there's an, a good chance of winning. I think this has got, this is, this is a strategic thing. So I, you trust us, trust me. We are not just, uh, just looking and uh, just looking at wards and then just because that ward is not so good or uh, you just want to go in, no. There are other issues before you decide you contest that one. Don't just go by constituency. Many of them think I'm going to West Coast and all this. But let them think. It's good. Let them think. <laughs> yeah. OK, next question uh, that's coming up. Uh, the third question. What is the key issue you will voice out about CPF if elected into parliament? I think CPF is a very important issue. It concerns all of us because it's related to your housing, related to your health care, and it's related also to some people's investment who have gone soured. So this, you have to do, have a, you must have a critical look at it. It is not a sacred cow, and I think that any of any responsible political party would really want to look into this issue very carefully. And I can assure you that PSP will definitely take up this issue. But as I said, you know, we must always do this with proper data. We don't just go and just hear stories about some of those uh, 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 CPF issues without proper backing. So we will really study. I think it is, is a fair question to ask and uh, a, a good issue also to take up. Okay, thank you, Doc. Uh, next question that we have. Um, how can we increase accountability in the selection and appointment of key personnel given controversial appointments recently? Example, Auditor General, uh, Attorney General. Should we have public hearings like in the US? You see, one of the reasons why I wanted to be a president in 2011 was I want to ensure that there's proper way of appointing people. So I have, a, I, I have actually a team in place then, and there are certain criteria that we must follow. For example, related parties, you know, people who are very connected with the government and so on. I, I think in the moment you have a proper system, a proper process. I always believe in processes. If your processes are correct, you see, with very good criteria in that process, that is the way we should do things. So whether it be uh, appointments or you want to check on anything, the moment you have a good process, I tell you, it will work. And these processes will definitely be instituted the moment, if ever you become a, if you have your power, if you, are, if you go to parliament, you know, it, it is not just going to parliament. No. If you want to really have effective change, you've got to take over government. Because all these are constitutional changes. And constitutional changes, you just must make sure 
that you do not have let the government have more than two thirds in parliament. If they have two thirds in parliament, whatever you want to do, you have no cannot do. You can't do. So you must make sure this coming general election to deprive them of a two thirds majority. Get all the all the issues that you want to bring up about accountability and all this. We can we can get it more effectively done. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, what are the first three things the PSP will do for Singaporeans as soon as you come into power? Anyone on the panel? Or you got answer again? Can okay. Michelle, you try to answer. <laughs> In power. Okay. Um. I can answer for myself, <laughs> okay, because, um, you know, maybe the first three things for each of us might differ. I hear you all talking about your CPF, and um, I, we have spoken actually, um, or rather, people have come to speak to us, uh, very well-renowned uh, economists, and they have said that actually um, the government can afford to pay us a higher return on our CPF. And um, I think part of that is asking for transparency as to how the money is being handled, um, accountability for decisions that are being made um, with serious consequences and losses, and we don't really know enough about that. So we will definitely push for transparency for that so that we can also ask, should we be getting higher returns on our CPF money so that the payout can be higher as well? Um, because I'm a teacher, education is very important to me. I think that a lot of um, parents are under a lot of stress and, and they actually put a lot of stress on their children as well. And so the children are under stress. So I think it's, I cannot understand why um, we don't have smaller class sizes. That's, that's very important to bring down stress on the families, on the children, and of course the foreign workers um, the PMETs are suffering. We, we hear from many of our members um, that, that their jobs are lost to non-Singaporeans and we need a lot of transparency on that and we need to seriously look, um, even for foreigners who come to Singapore, uh, who gets PR, who gets citizenship, it's not clear. They don't even know, we don't even know what is the criteria. Suka suka. <laughs> you want to give, you give. You want to give, you clamp down. What, what kind of uh, uh, rule is that? So, so we definitely ask for much more clarity. So that's my answer. Okay, okay. Um, so I would just like to add up a little bit more on what Michelle has said. I, I think one of the thing, key things that we look at when it comes to CPF, public housing, healthcare, um, you know, education, and everything, we we as PSP will take a look at everything in a more holistic manner. So meaning that we don't go just issue based. We look at the entire scenario. Because our CPF is linked to our housing right now. It's linked to our health care. It's linked to our retirement adequacy. So it's not just one policy in isolation. So our team will come together and, and examine the entire picture to come up with the best formula to help address all these things. So. We hope that you will join us and contribute ideas as well to help us better formulate this thing. In flexibility, um, it depends on whether the basic premise is are we here to serve the people or to control? We should we are able to incorporate in measures to allow CPF members greater flexibility in the excess of their funds without compromising the intention of um, retirement adequacy. Now, if um, the basic premise should always be how, which is the best way to improve the people's life by withholding the funds until a certain age when they may need it now desperately may not be the best way forward. I think there should be greater flexibility in that. 
your view uh, I, I know that some of some of the top people are having their pensions and but honestly this one we have to study uh, is it's a statement you have made and that we have to check it so, okay uh, is it could it be a PAP policy I'm not sure so. uh, can, I, can I say something yeah. um, I just like to say that for the PAP when I look at the policies that they implement and the way that they Yeah, who would like to be the one? 
Thank you very much for that question. I think that's a very interesting question. And it's also a question worrying many Singaporeans. What happens if, uh, uh, if, if it's not the PAP that's going to form the government? I think this is a very good strategy by the PAP because then it will instill further fear. Right? But you must understand, if, that, if the country collapses, because of this reason, actually it reflects on the PAP itself. That means the PAP has not done a good job. We, we trust them to build up a strong, stable Singapore. And if the moment they just walked away the, and the country collapsed, and they want to blame the opposition for, for, for it, I think it's wrong. So you all shouldn't be afraid. I always believe there's, a, there's also the civil service. We have to trust our civil servants. And I think our civil servants are, are good. I worked with the civil servants before. I can tell them they are very smart and very good people. And they're also concerned about the country. You see, politicians, of course, you want to be in votes, they scare the daylights out of you, right? They say, well, uh, if, 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 uh, if, if, if PSP and uh, Workers' Party will come and take over the country, will collapse. No, it shouldn't. If it really collapse, it reflects on them that they have not done a good job. You know? Okay, I, I, I think, you know, it's very important for Singaporeans to realize this. Being a political party that's made up of Singaporeans, why would we come and try and destroy the country that we live in together? Why would we do that? We are all here for the betterment of Singapore and Singaporeans at the end of the day. So people shouldn't play with this fear. We have a good civil service. As political leaders, we can help work together with them and guide Singapore towards a better direction. Thank you. Thank you. points here that um, number one is really very difficult for the opposition to get any headway. So I think that we really don't have to worry about that. Um, our aim is one third of the seat so that it won't be so easy just to push through what they want to push through. We really need Singaporeans to stand behind us even to get this one third. So that's what we have to do. The second thing is we don't need to worry we have an excellent civil service. Ministers are posted around to different ministries. Uh, they rotate and um, they often do not even have the background required for that ministry. So it's really the civil servants who are keeping it going and they will continue to do so. So we have nothing to worry about. Yeah. The third thing I'd like to say, the third thing I'd like to say is that that's precisely why we're here. We actually worry a great deal for Singapore. It's a very fragile system to have um, only a one party in place that, that pushes through what they want to, to have no real alternatives for the people. That actually makes your system much more fragile. And what are you afraid of? Jobs being lost? Um, you know, money being pulled out of the country? Well, I mean, it's actually already happening. So, what we really need is alternative voices to stop it further, to more, more ideas, try new things, new people coming in. Sorry. Um, I'd like to add to answer to that question. Uh, we have seen many other countries where the governments change. 
contribute to collapse. All right. In the developed countries, this, this is very common. Now, you don't look far, you just look north. All right. In Malaysia, when the DM was replaced by the Akatan Harapan, Malaysia is still thriving today. So I don't think you all Singaporeans need to be any worried about that. Right, folks, all questions have been answered and we are about to. One more question? You don't answer? Sure, 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 sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Most important, the new team that takes over will actually repair damage. You can see, you can see that there are lapses in the PAP now, and what we need to do is correct them. And you know what are the lapses already? I don't have to describe. So when you vote for organizations, means you are going to get people to actually repair the damage. Can I add something? I just want to relate my own personal experience. I come from the markets, the capital markets. Stop working is my profession. I see so many things wrong, you know, you talk about high flux, noble group. I think tons of investors' money has been lost. We have met the authorities, given our recommendations and all that. But they don't want to implement the problem in Singapore now is um, we have the scholars, they just helicopter them, drop them, and they run the show. Whereas we have the experience, we can talk until the cow come home, they don't implement. And when problems come, they just put their head on the ground, hopefully people will forget. That is an underlying problem now. So we need to change the whole mechanism where really the people's views are really heard. Not they say they want to hear, but then they hear you, but they already decided already. We don't want that. So PSP will be a different party where we will hear the people, for the people, work for the people and implement what you want. Anything else to, to reply on the panel? If not, then it's about time for us to sum up for the day. Uh, yes, as one of the was just mentioning in Singapore, many a time they parachute people into positions who don't have the relevant experience. Uh, for example, you know, our annual was sold. And then the following year, the company that bought the world made it profitable. So I don't know who's the problem with really, you know. And this same person was then parachuted with STH. And now SPH is also um, humble, uh, something like that, I don't know if you about it. So it's quite scary when people who have never run a business before are expected to have good business acumen. That is quite dangerous uh, sometimes, uh, the way we, we do things. So again, as you were saying, where is the accountability? Alright folks, we are reaching towards the end. What we're going to do is that we're going to bring the house lights down. It will be almost totally dark inside here because in PSP we feel that Singapore has lost its way to be in the dark. And symbolically, we will start with the panel switching on the torch light that they have been given. And all of you also do eventually switch on your, your handphone torch light and you bring the house lights up again. And by then we will also start to recite the flash and then I'll be singing of our national anthem and I trust that all of you will sing with all the passion in your heart for our wonderful country, the tiny red dot called Singapore! Okay. Can everyone please stand? <coughs> Let us try a short activity as we are ready to recite our pledge and sing the anthem as the lights dim. Dog will turn on his torch. And the rest of the panel as well. And as you can see, the light of the person will be beside you is switching on as well. This represents how the light of progress and hope can be passed from one Singaporean to another. You can bring your torch as it is even more wonderful. Yes! Thank you very much. Can we bring on the pledge? We, we, the citizens of Singapore, pledge ourselves as one united people, 